Today on Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Oh, fuck that bitch. Yeah, I put them down in disgust. I was like, no. You know what happens if Peach lands on Bowser's spot? I'm guessing he has sex with her. No. <laughs> what? He rapes her. No. <laughs> Madden. 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 <laughs> I don't Just know. fucking say Madden. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've never heard them called thin, thin chips. Oh, no. the, chips. Fucking potato chips. You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode 73 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. This is Matt. Oh, no <laughs> box Tim this time. <laughs> What's going on with that? Where's, where's he at today? Uh, probably at his house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's probably doing a drug deal. No, you should have said like, he's like out saving the world or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, today we've got some Game of the Week action, top five games to play with friends, and maybe a Jerk of the Week or two. Uh, we have a new segment by Nick, and Brandon might have something as well. I have a few things. Okay, so let's get to that quote time. This is the beginning of the song. Oh, I know what it is. I think. What is it? I think it's Tenacious D. No. What is it? It's from Scott Pilgrim. Uh, one of the uh, songs he said this is the beginning of the song it's to threshold when they uh, do battle with the uh, twins that song the last song they play it's heck of awesome sex bomb yep uh, so i was uh fiddling around this thing called youtube looking at um some of our uh, podcasts up there and i gotta say i like youtube video episode 34 christmas time where we talk about Christmas memories and Genesis games and that was right before heaven and hell and uh, that was a f little tidbit episode 34 is the first appearance of Mia Matt's daughter cool brother Matt yes oh, oh br <laughs> brother Matt <laughs> game of the week I started playing Kingdom Hearts again I'm not very far into it but I like that game that's cool, Kingdom Hearts. I like that game. Yep, it's fun. Is that like a Disney game or something? Disney like that? and SquareSoft mixed. So, are there, what Disney characters are are you? Or Man, are you, a, is whole, there a lot. Yeah, you can get Jack Skellington to join your party. Oh, uh, you visit each world. So, like, you you're in Halloween Town, and it plays the Halloween Town theme when oh, you're in sweet. there. It's so tight. It's awesome. There's Aladdin. Yeah, you go in the Cave of Wonders, and Aladdin joins you. Your two main people who join you are Donald and Goofy. Mm -hmm. And Donald's like a mage, and Goofy's like a protector guy. And um, What's that it, It's really cool. Maleficent, mm -hmm. she's like one of the last bosses. And you uh -huh. fight Cerberus, and you even fight Sephiroth. Huh. He's heck of hard, but I beat him one time. He's heck of hard, though. Is, it, is that like a similar to the, the new... Uh, Infinity? No. Disney Infinity is Infinity is gay. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So. It's hella retarded. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's Infinity? I'm not familiar it's with It's like that. you buy the little characters like Skyrim and you put them on the portal and you oh, play as them. Right. Basically you have to pay to play as characters. I saw that on the Nintendo Instagram page. They kept saying Infinity and I was like, what? What is that? So they're actually physical characters though, right? And you put them on a portal and then the they, they go onto the screen. Yeah. Huh. I think you mean Skylanders, right? You yeah, Skyrim. Skyrim. Oh yeah, Skyrim's yeah. stupid too. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up with the amiibo for the Smash Brothers? You put it on your controller, and if you do team battles with your me person, they fight alongside with you. That's it. Yeah. Oh, that's dumb. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been. They're pocket monsters. 
No, there are no Pokemon. <laughs> no, Pocket Monsters. What the fuck is that? Isn't that what they're called in, in Lofia? Ja- oh, oh, that's Capsule Monsters. Capsule oh. Monsters, excuse me. Pocket Monsters are what it's called in ja- Japan. Pokemon. Oh, that's what it's Pokemon yeah. called? Oh, maybe that's why I got it confused. I was going for Capsule Monsters. I was playing Evil Within. I got two more trophies to get. Uh, I've got... Or I... Last of Us. Evil Within. Oh. Nah, I'm still playing Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get it done. Sometime in the next year or so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, uh, a big accomplishment I did was beat the game in three hours and 55 minutes, 15 chapters. My first playthrough was 20 hours and 42 minutes. So that's pretty good. Tight. Did you feel like you were rushing? Oh, I knew I was rushing, yeah. Really? I, I ran through tons of enemies. I only fought when I had to. And even when there were mobs of enemies, i just throw a spark bolt and blind them all and run away from them. So, yeah. It was, it was cool. How close was it? What? Like, were, were you down to the wire? Like, was it close in the time? Or? No, I had an hour to spare. <laughs> <laughs> I beat it in three hours and 55 minutes, and I had to beat it in five. Mm. Oh, wow. So I got to the last chapter at three hours and 24 minutes. I said, yeah, I got this. Okay. I haven't played anything other than on Friday night, uh, Brad, Maddie G, and I went over to uh, Xbox Tim's place. And we played some, what is it called, drop kick or something that, like that? That's so funny. <laughs> uh, Xbox Tim, by the way, is the guy who you heard on the last podcast. Yeah. And on 65 and 66. So we played some drop kick, which was a fun, it's a fun fighting game. It only requires that you use two buttons. Like you don't use a D-pad or a joystick or anything. You just jump and kick. That's all you do. It's, it's a really fun game. The characters are fun. Uh, but then we also played Worms Armageddon, which I, I've always loved the Worms games. Uh, that was really fun as well. We played three matches, I think. Yeah. We played two free for all matches and one match where uh we were on teams. Maddie G and I were on a team, and Xbox Tim and Brad were on a team one time, uh, one match, and uh, Maddie G and I prevailed in that one. I must say, I was highly distracted by Holly's Dragon Ball cards. <laughs> oh yeah, did what, did you, was there anything good in them? Yeah, she had like Kid Trump, like World Games promos and high techs and stuff. Uh-huh. And there was a uh, capsule corp cup that I got a drink out of. Uh-huh. Check a type. Yeah, she's really catering to the Dragon Ball community. Yeah, she wants to watch all the shows again because she's doing martial arts. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. But uh, on Worms, yeah, I think I only won once. Well, I played was, three games. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> I just don't think people saw me as a threat and left me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I did kind of choke on, on that last game. I, I did some move where Tim had. I, he had one worm left and oh, it had yeah. two life, and I tried to blowtorch him. <laughs> and I, instead of holding down the, the button to use the blowtorch, I just tapped it. And I thought that I would tap it and then tap it again to stop it, but it was it turned out you have to hold it down until you want it to stop. So I, I kind of choked on that one and allowed Tim to stay alive. And Anyway, I probably should have won that one, but that's all right. I won the first one and I won the, the team one, so that's cool. Yep. And then we played some boss monster. That was fun. I was hecka tight. I was pretty juiced on playing that. That was. It's been so long that we played that. I was. I was really enjoying that. We need to play it again soon. You have a game of the week. I didn't play any games this week, uh, except for the Worms uh, that I played with Nick and Xbox Tim. Um, I was playing uh, the what Zelda is that? Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword. I've been playing that, but uh, I haven't had too much time this week to play it because I've been busy with two Kings games and stuff. So yeah, didn't really have a chance to do it. But that's the one that I'm working on right now. How far are you? Um, well, that, uh, see, I, I played six hours, but I think I just now got into the forest because, yeah. uh, it takes like a long time getting everything and going through the words and all that stuff. But, um, I went through the forest and found those, uh, the, the little hedgehog dudes. Yeah. Yeah. I found, I found those guys. I think that's where I left off where you can go kind of back and forth through the forest and the, uh, sky, skyland. Is that what yeah. Call it? Yeah. Skyloft. Skyloft. Yeah. Uh, how do you like the controls? Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It's like the sword, like you, you have to like actually thrust, you know, and swipe and all that stuff. Hold it up in the air to get power. Yeah. yeah. Hold, that's kind of cool. Cause you feel like you're a hero. <laughs> I think I need to like get up off the couch when I play and like actually get into it. Um, yeah. Instead of just sitting down. I think it would be tighter if I was actually pretending like I was walking around. Yeah. So you get some sub weapons that you have to use the control with too, and it's hecka tight. It works really well. Um, I got a slingshot. Okay. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, there's probably other weapons too, but I do yeah. have a slingshot right now. So cool. shoot things. That's cool. You're almost to the first dungeon. How exciting! Tight. 
Can I tell a story? Yeah. I went to Oakland this past Wednesday for a job interview. Oh, man. And uh, I I have a... Did you get shot at? No, not at all. But I did see a lot of shady characters. I have had a shirt I was going to wear and a tie in the trunk of my car. So the mor- that morning I, I was about to leave and I checked and I put the shirt on and asked my kids if the shirt was wrinkled. And Naja said, yes, you need to change that shirt. So I was like, forget it. I'm just going to go down there and buy a, a outfit from Target and then wear that. So this was my outfit. Oh, nice. Which I will post. Dapper. <laughs> I saw that, yeah. <laughs> I will post that. Um, On the treasure hunting page? Yeah. So look forward to that. But well, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the funny thing is that outfit cost me 55 bucks for the shirt and the sweater. Did you keep the tags on it? Of course I did. Oh, man. So when I went, I did my interview. Uh, I was on the ninth floor of the parking garage, which you have to pay to park there. But the manager who was hiring me said, oh, I wish I had validation stamps, but I can't find them. I said, that's okay. So I get up to the ninth floor. I start undressing to put the stuff back in the bag. And she says, Brandon. And then I turned around <laughs> half undressed. <laughs> and uh, I throw it in the... I throw the shirt in the car and slam the trunk. And she says, I found the parking. I'm like, oh, thanks. And I go back to the car and I lock my keys in the trunk. (laughs) So I had to pay this Armenian tow truck company to come unlock it for me. They wanted, after all is said and done, took about two hours. He wanted 180 bucks. And I said, dude, you made me wait two hours. He's like, fine, uh, 130. I'm like, that's fine. So mm. that sucked hella, hella bad. So, but the upside is I went to Target and returned everything. I said, I needed this for an interview tomorrow, but I found my sweater and shirt I was going to wear. <laughs> Make they, up, ex- heck up detailed excuses. <laughs> it's sad as they probably didn't even ask you anything. No, <laughs> they probably said, oh, yeah. <laughs> She said, uh, is anything wrong with it? I said, no. Uh, I, I said, no. She said, okay. So, um, I got th- that back at least. So. That was my story. When you were wearing the new shirt and uh, and uh, sweater, were the tags showing in your interview? Not at all. Oh, I made I made sure. Don't you think that'd be good? Because then they know. Oh, this guy bought new clothes. <laughs> so, she, yeah. she did when I was undressing. My tie was off and the tag was hanging. So when I turned around, it was dangling there. <laughs> so she might have saw it, but I grabbed it and walked over to her. <laughs> good thing they were new pants that you bought. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that was pretty pretty cool. Oh yeah, it's funny. Treasure hunting. Yes. What do you have? I have nothing. Oh man. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad I picked up the slack. I was telling these guys <laughs> here in the house that I've turned into a snob. I don't go for the oh at least it's double and doesn't sell like like say like I, Predator like the, you got last time yeah, and Terminator like, yeah. and all those games. I don't know why they're not selling, but. I was like, I'm just going to get stuff that I know will sell. Uh-huh. So, uh, I the I get there around, what, 7.30, I think. And the first lady I come to, she has a stack of Super Nintendo games. Oh, man. And I said, are your games all one price? And she's a different. I was like, all right. She's old. Said, all right. So, I picked up uh, two decoys. Desert Strike, uh, Bulls vs. Blazers. And Super Mario World. And I said, how much for these? She said, uh, the Basketball 5, the Helicopter 15, and Mario 20. Oh, fuck that bitch. Yeah, I put them down in disgust. I was like, no. <laughs> and so, um, and some other ones I didn't pick up. This guy had two copies of Super Mario Brothers Deluxe for Game, Game Boy Color. Uh-huh. And they're worth eight bucks. So I said, how much for these? He said, five bucks each. And I said, no, that's all right. And I put him down. He's like, how much do you want to pay? I said, I was only wanting to pay two bucks. Yeah, two dollars. So I just walked away. And he's he was like, four. I was like, no, two dollars. I just kept walking. Then the guy right next to him had Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario Brothers 2. He had two copies of the Super Mario Brothers 2. I said, how much for the Mario games? He said, 15 for three and 20 for two. I was like, no. He's like, how much do you want to pay? I said, I only pay four bucks each for these. 
He's like, no, I can't do that. I said, yeah, I can't do 15. No one's going to buy it for 15 or 20. No, that's retarded. It's stupid. Who, who goes to Denios to pay eBay prices? I don't get it. <laughs> so here's some... They should just sell their shit on eBay if they don't want to... Yeah. And, oh, and, and then when I was leaving, uh, I saw Indiana Jones for Super Nintendo. That's 15 bucks. So I said, how much for this? It was... You know, it was the Arabic weasel. Oh, that, it was. I, I should have went with you. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't realize it until after I left. And he said, uh, I said, how much for Indiana Jones? He said, 10. I said, well, you take five. He's like, you can get it on line $18. And I said, 18. <laughs> and then I was like, nah, forget it. So my first item comes from a guy who had humongous price tags on everything 20 bucks for super c he had a whole bunch of games uh 40 dollars for mario 3 oh fuck yeah. 50 dollars for pokemon diamond oh what the insane fuck? prices uh 10 dollars for bubsy 2 for super nintendo 25 for banjo kazooie uh, uh 10 bucks for excite bike so then I said, "Do you tell tell these people what the fuck's wrong with that?" <laughs> so, oh, so, insane. so this game I think I got for a bargain. Okay. I said, "How much for this boxing game?" He said, "There wasn't a price." He said, five? I was like, "All right." Is it Mike Tyson? Oh, it is. That's hecka tight. Is this worth like twenty? Twenty one bucks. Yep. It's hecka tight. It's, hecka, to, it's in hecka good condition. We just have too. to test it. Oh, I'm sure it works. Uh, so then the... Dang, look how good that Mike Tyson looks yeah. on that. So this next item, I went to the couple that sells games for hecka expensive. Remember them? They have like the Zelda 2 complete. They... Oh, yeah, yeah, that bitch. Yeah, so I was talking to the guy and he had a Madden limited edition first championship 93. 93? Complete uh -huh. sealed. How much? It said 18 on the price tag. I looked at it, and he said, if you're wondering if that's $18, it's not. I said, no, I'm not a Madden guy. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Tell him that. <laughs> Should have thrown it at him. Yeah. So uh, we were talking. He was talking about Castlevania and all this other stuff, the games he likes to play, and I really just wanted to leave. So I said, how much for this game? He's like, $10. I said, well, it's loose. You know, it's just a single disc. Or you take eight for it. He's like, I'll take eight for it, loose disc. Oh, it's a GameCube game. Luigi's Mansion, <laughs> another one? Is that like 22? Yeah. Dang. And then this was uh, just from a Mexican couple that really didn't know what they had. It was in a display case, but um, they only wanted three bucks for it, so I just said whatever. Leaf Green? Tight. I don't, I didn't check the price, but I knew it was worth more than ten. It, yeah, I had it last week. It's like sixteen. Oh, okay. And then this this game I had to work for. He had a big case. Yeah, work the shaft. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> he had uh, about eight to ten GameCube games, and I only saw one I wanted. So I said, "How much for this game?" And he was like, ten dollars." I was like, uh, "Let me take a look." I opened it. It had Sonic Heroes in it. Like, the wrong game was in there. It's like, oh, man. So I was looking around his whole store, and I found it. Found uh, the Sonic Heroes case, and I ho opened it up, and I was like, yes, this is it. So I was like, come on, you've got to take um, less than 10 since I did all the work. And he was like, uh, eight. I said, how about five? And then he said, all right, five. Oh, nice. The only thing is, I thought it came with the book, but it doesn't. Oh. But it still goes between 20 and 22 with, with case and game. That's tight. It's Star Fox Assault for GameCube. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting to say what it, what it is. That's cool. Good haul. Yeah. Okay. Let's get this uh, punishment out of the way. Yes! <laughs> Redemption. And you don't get to choose, right? Because I don't have any items, so I don't get to choose my oh, thing. Does that mean Brandon gets to choose, or is it just random? No, he gets to choose. I, I rolled twice, and he chooses one. <laughs> Shout out to Dice Roller app. 
you could go from a D4 to a D100 and pretty much anywhere in between. Two, minus five to Treasure Bank. Seven, Buttercup. I have to stick with that minus five. Yes. Okay, your prize. Eleven, Shockmaster. Ten, Taxi. Taxi! <laughs> So taxi, if you guys don't know, he he gets to cart me around while we go yard selling and dimple hunting, and possibly goodwill hunting. Yeah, <laughs> goodwill hunting. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Do you know what episode it was that we had talked about our favorite drinks? Thirty-two, short and sweet. Thank you. So, uh, did, Matt, did you get a chance to listen to this week's episode that dropped today? Seventy-two. Yesterday, it's Lost Team Revenge. Yeah. 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 I don't know if that was official title, but yeah. <laughs> uh, so you heard that he gave us a game and some prizes. Yeah, yeah. I sorry. <laughs> I, I just I just heard that on the way over here today, and I was like, oh man. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I've been trying to think of a game to do though, but I haven't really I haven't really thought of one yet though. Yeah. And I and I did go to a couple of thrift stores, and uh -huh. I was like, oh, do you have games here? Uh -huh. And they're just like, shit, like nothing good. So I was like, all right, I'm not thinking of treasure hunting yet. I'm a level one, so <laughs> that's cool. That's okay. So go ahead and like us on Facebook if you haven't already. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We're going to be having a contest come up for all of our subscribers and likes uh, to win another random prize. And subscribe to us on iTunes as well. That you'll get all the f uh, new episodes that come out as soon as they drop. So that's heck of tight. <coughs> So we have a top five this week, top five games to play with your friends, top five video games that is, not like board games or anything. So we're going to start off with Matt, guest host first. All right. Oh, he's got a death note. Do you write people, put, write Anthony Cross's name? <laughs> <in there. laughs> Do you know what death note is? No, what it, is that? It's a Japanese animation slash manga where someone gets a something called a death note. And they write a name in it. Oh, no. And then they die in a minute. But it has to be oh, the man. full name. Yeah. So if you know an alias, it won't work. Oh, wow. So like, you write down Anthony Kloss, and then a minute later, I'll have a heart <laughs> if attack. If he doesn't die, though, that means that's not his real name. Yeah. Oh, I don't want him to die, then, then I'd get, inherit another kid. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> then you, write, you can write Trace's name in there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. You can specify the time of death, so you can write it so that, like, it's right when Trace turns 18 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. That's funny. That'd be tight if I had a death note. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this top five actually is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Um, when I originally thought of it, I was like, oh, yeah, I already had games in mind and stuff. I started jotting them down, and I realized I had over 10 games, and I didn't know. <laughs> And I, you know, I don't want to say I equally liked them, but I didn't know what order to put them. So I'm going to have a bunch of honorable mentions this time. But uh, uh, my number five is, uh, uh, sorry guys, it's for uh, Xbox. Um, one of my, my best friends had an Xbox, and we go over to his house and play uh, Ghost Recon. Um, what I liked about this game is it was split screen, four player, and you had to do co-op against the computer. So it wasn't like, um, you know, first person shooter where you're just playing online and stuff like that. You're actually working with your friends to try to get through the, get through the levels. And, um... They were hecka hard for some reason. I don't know if we just weren't good at it or what, but we'd always end up uh, like trying to infiltrate this base and, um, uh, you know, you go left, you go right, and we'd always end up dying or not making it through. And then I got this uh, this gun uh, called the TP-95, and I call it the Team Player 95. And I was like, oh, I'm a team player, and, and I, I'm Lone Wolf, Lone Wolf. And I'd like just run off, and they're like, no, you gotta go over here. And I'd just, oh, it's all right, I got the Team Player 95. I'll, I'll handle it, and... Uh, I'd always end up uh, being the last one alive, and they'd all die because I'd like run off and did my own thing. <laughs> but um, it was just heck of fun. We'd play. They they all lived together. They were three roommates, and I'd I'd drive over to their house, and we'd play to like the middle of the night, you know, three a.m. or whatever, um, playing that game. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, my number five was Mario Party. Basically, you're you're. Uh, we talked about it before. You start off on a board game, and you go around and play mini games. All really fun. They're quick, like 30 seconds to 6 to a minute. And you have to collect coins to buy stars. And then if whoever has the most stars wins. But there's always funny traps to fall upon you. Like if you land on a Bowser spot, he takes all your coins or stars. But it's always randomized, so you might not 
get away too you, easy. Or, you know what happens if Peach lands on Bowser's spot? I'm guessing he has sex with her. No. <laughs> what? He rapes her. No. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my number five. Rapey party. One for rape. It's heck of tight. My number five. A kind of a newer game. WWE 2K14. <laughs> nice. Two words. Downtown. <laughs> Uh, each wrestler has a taunt that you could use by putting the control pad and if you choose our truth and push the down arrow <laughs> on the control pad he goes <laughs> and shakes his dick at you <laughs> he violently gyrates his hips in your direction <laughs> and, and he does it to a beat too <laughs> so that um Nick and I play this mostly and then I play with my kids and that game's just so fun to play. Mm -hmm. You could choose any wrestler, pretty much. Stone Cold flips people off. <laughs> Undertaker does the Understone Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my favorite person to play with is either Randy Orton or uh, Macho Man. Speaking of our truth, I was watching uh, 2012 Survivor Series today because we're gearing up for the 2014 Survivor Series this evening. And the, the last match was a tag team match. It was John Cena and Rock supposedly ta uh, tagged together for the first time forever. Like they're never going to do it again. And they were, they were uh, against a team that was called the Awesome Truth. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Miz and R-Truth. And they were like, they were a heck of heels. And uh, R-Truth did his rap thing. Because whenever he comes out to the ring, he does a rap. But he was... He and he titled it "You Suck" instead of "What's Up." <laughs> oh, yeah. Clever, clever. It was like a funny. I like when he goes, and I haven't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he obviously did start because he's singing. So, do you guys know if the authority loses, he's going to be in power? Ooh, I've got I, an I inside trap. Shane heard, McMahon. Heard, yeah, that's not the rumor. That's my speculation. That would be tight. Mine was uh, uh, "It's a New Day, people." Oh, oh, no. Yeah. No uh, way. Kofi, Biggie. black people in charge. <laughs> no. The, the, Vince would never put black people in charge of uh, WWE. He won't put the belt on. No. How are you going to put him in charge? He did it to The Rock. The Rock is black. He's he does fake black. He doesn't... Uh, did you listen to that cheap heat when they talked about that? Every They even called up MVP and... He's like, dude, Rock ain't black. He's Samoan. <laughs> He's half these. No, but he doesn't <laughs> identify with his African heritage. It's all Samoan. Because he's all tatted up Samoan style, whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. We have the Jerry Crow. Oh, you know, I saw a Target. <laughs> the, the Jerry yesterday. Crow Rock? It was. It was a uh, flashback, and it was in his blue jumpsuit, oh, like yeah. his blue uniform when he first came up here. Yeah. I love that picture where he's got the fanny pack and he's sitting and <laughs> leaning against like a suitcase. Yeah. He's going, oh, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> done i am done with wwf 2k14 <laughs> <laughs> my number five is mario kart wii the sixth installment of the mario kart series it's very similar to the other mario karts but i like that uh they make use of the wii mote <coughs> you can uh, use the wii mote as a uh, steering wheel i also like that up until recently at least you could play with your opponents online uh i guess they discontinued that in may they don't allow uh online play on mario kart wii anymore really uh i thought it was a really cool game because even though she's not really that great at it my wife does enjoy playing the game uh i even caught her playing by herself a few times uh we played a lot with video games yeah <laughs> she was playing mario kart wii no joke i i walked in on her and she was playing and she was trying she was practicing walked in on her she was playing with herself <laughs> I, I didn't get that sorry <laughs> So I just wanted to say that way, uh, while there was online play available, I played with uh, a plethora of opponents. I played with Brother Tim, that would be Poker Tim, and his wife Liz. I played with Xbox Tim and his daughter Ariel. I played with Mike Bunton, who's been on the show a couple times, at least once there. Can just I, once. Just once. Uh, and his son Andrew as well, and we also played with a couple of other family members. So it's a really cool game. Uh, you can play with... I mean, we were doing this, like, with eight different players all in, like, four different locations. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, unlike the other Mario Kart games where you have to be in the same place to play and all of a sudden your TV looks like, you know, a checkerboard because there's screens everywhere. <laughs> 
So it was cool that you could play in different locations and you don't have to deal with all the different split screens. Uh, the one thing that I don't like about that is that it kind of favors the inferior players in that like if you're in like last place, you get like the blue shell and there's like this bullet bill thing that you get that freaking gets you all the way up into first place it seems like. So I, I found that like a good strategy is just to hang around like third or fourth place because the first place guy always gets fucked. So you just have to hang out in third or fourth place and make a push at the end and hope to hope to prevail. Red turtle shells. Red turtle shells are a bitch, but ha you know the blue turtle shells? Yep. You don't want to mess it with the blue It goes straight to shell. the first player. Yeah, it does. And even if you're in the vicinity of the first place yeah. player, you get fucked because the, there's a huge explosion. Oh, so man. you got to hang out in like third or fourth place. All right, so that's my number five is Mario Kart Wii. All right, so uh, my number four, it would be, it's kind of a, I want to say a combination of games, but um, I put NBA Live, but kind of all, all sports games, really, I thought, um, is how I wanted to do this one, because they're, they're not really that fun to play by yourself, but they're super fun to play with your friends. Uh, we used to play NBA Live a lot uh, at Nick's house uh, with my brother and Nick. That was when uh, PS2 first had the, the expansion thing where you can play four players, and um, yeah. you could all play at once, and... Um, I mean, it was fun playing those games, but I, I'd have to say the uh, the highlight of it was uh, probably Nick throwing his controller and blaming the game for cheating because <laughs> other guys, either his guys weren't making shots or Aaron's guys were always making their shots. Uh, it was uh, what, Boris Diaw blocking everything or whatever. And, uh, who was who the superstar that he used? That, Travis Outlaw. Travis Outlaw, who I don't, even, I don't think he's in the league anymore. Is that a real basketball player? Yeah, his Damn, name is Travis Outlaw. We didn't even know his name was Travis Outlaw. It was it just said T Outlaw. So for the longest time, he even played for the Kings for a few years. Yeah. And we always called him T Outlaw. Even when he was on the Kings, wow. we, we obviously knew who he was at that point. But it was just always T Outlaw. Um, but yeah, so that's why that, that was my number four. And then I also would play like football games with my other buddy and stuff. Um, but uh, I, I have uh, Nick's, Nick's reactions. Uh, he doesn't like to lose. So it's also <laughs> pretty, pretty funny because sports games is so like, I mean, it's so random. Like if you're going to make the shot or not, it just, you know, I, I don't yeah. know if it's a, like a, some sort of algorithm they put in the game and it just happens to make it or not, or if you have to be open or what, but. So, I mean, it's it. just like if you're playing basketball. It's just because you get a good shot. It's not, it doesn't mean it's going to go in. True, true, yeah. true. So, but yeah, so M M NBA Live, I guess you could say, would be my number four. So, pop survey, worst sports franchise in video games. Madden. 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 <laughs> I don't Just know. fucking say Madden. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> What's better, 10-yard fight or Madden? <laughs> Tenured fight even when you can't get it to work. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. N number four on my list is Guitar Hero. Not the uh, whole band setup because I never played that. Just regular old Guitar Hero. Uh, one guitar and you just trade back and forth with your friends. Or you could verse. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, I just remember wanting to play Guitar Hero Part 2 because uh, it had Avenged Sevenfold on it. Yeah. And I said, man, I really want this game, but I want to spend 80 bucks on it. I was like, hey, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be cool. <laughs> Dude, have you heard of Guitar Hero 2? And Dick is an old roommate of mine. Basically, he he walked into this huge settlement by getting his arm crushed at work <laughs> and got paid a buttload of money, but he wasn't very wise with it. <laughs> uh, so I said, hey, Dick, Guitar Hero 2. What? I didn't know they made a part two. Yeah, it's got Avenged Sevenfold on it. And uh, this other band called uh, Wolf Mother. What was it? Wolf Child? Seven? No. Uh, something Wolf. And he was like, I never even heard of that. But fuck it. Let's go get it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a tight. We got to play Avenged Sevenfold. Mike was there and we... Um, took turns playing game uh, the different songs and beast in the harlot yeah and it was all it was guitar hero was really cool for like six months but then it just died out and i can't really play it anymore but it was fun at the time i had a funny story about going over your house and playing it some girls were over too watching Alvan play it and oh Alvan yeah was shredding on it <laughs> <laughs> and Alvan lifted the guitar up for the star power uh -huh. And then the girls were all looking at it, and Mike's like, no, it's okay. You get extra points when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up doing it too, huh? Yeah. yeah, I remember that. And then he brought it down, like, not even looking at the screen. I was like, how's he doing that? <laughs> South Park episode. <laughs> <laughs> Guitar Hero. Yeah. 
Guitar Quero. Yeah. That's what it was called. <laughs> Number four on my list is a very obscure game that I think only two people in this room have played. It's called WarioWare Inc. Yeah. It's for the GameCube. It is very weird. There's hundreds of micro games to play. Uh, basically, they're, instead of what was your game? Mario Party that had 30 seconds. These games were like three to five seconds long. And you just had to push like A or B or the D-pad. There's one where there's tweezers that a, a human's holding up to their nose and you have to pick a hair and pull it out by pushing <laughs> the A button. And it's just so weird. And this was the first game that they actually put real life humans in it. Like pictures of humans besides like Sewer Shark that I've noticed. So um, that game... It's really fun and really weird. I still have it. We should bust it out. Hmm. I don't know if I have five seconds to spare to do that. To pick some nose hairs. <laughs> <laughs> or crush apples with your hands. Yeah. It's heck of tight. My number four is a sports game. It's Virtua Tennis. Yes. Released in 2000 for the Dreamcast. This game provided uh, many hours of fun. Uh, I remember spending entire nights at the Covarubias household playing two-on-two -two matches on this game. Brandon and I were gods on this game. Was Jeremiah there? He might have been. I don't remember. Do you and remember? He, he lost all the time, I bet. I think he, he used to play. There was a German yeah. uh, tennis player. I can't remember the guy's name. Tommy right Haas. Now. Yeah, Tommy Haas. Haas that's yeah. what it was. What a f***. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a good chance that he was there. So, uh... You used to like to use Jim Courier, right? Because yep. he was the American guy. Yep. And I always used uh, the Spaniard, Carlos Moya. You know what his power was? Powerful stroke. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon would play at the net and pick off any lazy returns, and I would I would play the baseline and just cover Brandon in case anything got by him. We were a perfect team. And we still are in real life, too. Tom. Undefeated. <laughs> Alright, I just made a, a last minute switch on my number three. Um, I could not have this game on my top five, so I'm bumping it all the way to number three. Uh, Barman 64. Um, game was so much fun. Uh, got it with my uh, my family when we got Nintendo 64 for Christmas as a uh, as a joint gift for everybody. And uh, man, we would play Bomberman 64, like multiplayer only, so many times. Pumping up the bombs, throwing them at people, made them bounce off their head. Uh, there's like the 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 skulls and it would be different like uh sicknesses you get where your guys would be like we call it elephantitis if you got super big and like the other guy could run around quicker and you're all these giant guys going slow um uh the red bombs that you could pump up and explode everybody um uh, i don't know the game was just super fun if you guys haven't played it on 64 definitely should play it uh nick also would come over our house and play that game a bunch uh one of the funniest things is my dad who never really plays console video games He'd always play that, and whenever he win, he'd get up and do the dance at the little bar that <laughs> I would do. That's tight. <laughs> so I think that was pretty tight, too, for that. So, uh, Barman 64. Number three was for me was Virtua Tennis. Number three on my list is going to have to be Street Fighter 2, the original, mm -hmm. the arcade version. We discovered this at Mountain Mike's Pizza and fell in love with it. I remember our first time my mom took us to Mountain Mike's, they had the little pepperonis on the pizza, yeah. and it was just so good. And then we looked over, and we saw Street Fighter 2. Of course, I picked Blanca first because he looked like such a monster. Then I quickly fell in love with Ken because he had much more flashier moves than Ryu. And long blonde hair. <laughs> 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 yeah, for some reason, pizza and video games go hand in hand, so that was a great day when I discovered that game. That's the end of my number three. Nice. This wasn't specified uh, when we decided to do this topic, but for some reason I wanted to only pick games where four or more players could play. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I don't have any fighting games on my list. Mm -hmm. uh, my number three is Worms World Party, released nice. in 2001 for the Dreamcast. Yes. Recently been playing uh, Armageddon with Xbox Tim. Uh, that's another Worms game that just, just came out recently. But my best memories are uh, from World Party, the, the game that was released for the Dreamcast. Uh, there's a couple new features on the on the new game that are cool, and the graphics are superior, obviously, now that we're playing on an Xbox One rather than a Dreamcast. But the ninja rope on World Party <laughs> is so badass. You could Basically, you could use the ninja rope to fly through the air, like, like not only like suspended from the ceiling, but you could 
go from the ground all the way up to the top with the ninja rope. You could like use it as an anchor, like sh shove it into the ground. And then if you were really good, you can uh, maneuver your worm to swing back and forth. And eventually you could have him floating in the air and you could just go pretty much anywhere with the ninja rope. Now they have, um, they give you a lot of jet packs and water packs that you can fly around with, but they're minimal. They used to give you a ton of ninja rope so you could get really creative with them. So I, I do prefer World Party, like I said, just because I have a lot of good memories with it. And I do like that the, the ninja rope was uh, did allow for a little bit more creativity. Yeah, the ninja rope on this one sucks on the Xbox It's one. really hard to get around yeah. with it. You just kind of have to hope to swing to the correct place. I also made a, a side note on here that this is another game that I played at the Covarubius household. And I think I might have enjoyed those games so much because Joe's mom always made some bomb carnitas. Oh, man. <laughs> and then the uh, carne asada. Oh, yes. Jason Johnson picked that apart. <laughs> it was just strips of meat of steak. And oh, it was God, so, it was so good. good. And oh, it, it was like it seemed unlimited. <laughs> Hey, if you guys want to see what uh, Jason Johnson looks like when he was a kid, check out the episode of South Park. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the uh, o Oculus one, uh, <laughs> Cartman, that's all I'd say. Look at the kid Cartman. <laughs> that's my number three is Warner's World Party. All right. Uh, my number two uh, is going to be StarCraft uh, for the computer. Uh, started with uh, my family's love for uh, Warcraft 2, and then when StarCraft came out, my dad's like, oh, it's in space, and <laughs> my dad's all into tech stuff, so he was like super pumped that it was in space, and uh, man, we used to play that game, my two brothers and my dad and I, um, all the time. Um, you can play uh, from uh, multiple computers. We could be at the same house or online or whatever and play that game. Um, my brother, even being in Philadelphia, we played that game a few times with him. Uh, probably one of the funniest things that was, my little brother's the best at that because he's super quick with uh, the hot keys and all that stuff. But my dad plays the most. He'll play on his <laughs> he'll play on his own time. He'll play the computer. He like practices, plays all the time, <laughs> <laughs> and he's the worst one at it. <laughs> the other day we were at dinner and he just started busting up laughing. And he's like, I don't get it, man. I play so much and I'm not good. And he just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and, I, I, and it was. It's kind of sad, but we always tell him, like, Dad, you got to learn to use the hotkeys, hotkeys, because he just uses the mouse and clicks and clicks, and, <laughs> and it just takes a long, long time, and uh, before he can do stuff, like, Brian, so quick, he can bring all his, his fleet in and just decimate us and, and, and whatnot, but um, that game's fun, just on, on, like, a family level, and, and, and even playing by yourself, it's fun, but I think with uh, all four of us playing it at one time is, is pretty cool, so that was my number two, StarCraft. My number two comes with a sound bit. See if you guys could guess this game. I know. I know it too. Twisted Metal Black. <laughs> uh, I play this at Nick's house mainly with the multiplayer tap for the PlayStation 2. It was him, myself, Jeremiah, and... Why even mention his name? <laughs> <laughs> Because he sucks so bad at it. We should just call him Douche. That could be his name. Ouch. Uh, who else would play? I know we'd have four people. Was it a Kova Rubius? It might have been Aaron. I'm not sure. But um, it was released June of 2001. And this was the first auto combat game that I truly fell in love with. Although Twisted Metal 3 did have some cool Rob Zombie music on it. Yeah. But this game was so dark and disturbing. Most of the characters were being held in the mental institution named Blackwood Asylum. The story mood takes you through the tale of the character you choose. If you don't know the general theme of Twisted Metal, a man named Calypso holds a tournament and whoever wins gets one wish granted, whatever they want. And each level pits you against other drivers that you have to take out and destroy. A few of the playable characters include the killer clown Needles Kane, who drives the ice cream truck Sweet Tooth, who wishes to seek the antidote to the curse that plagues him. Dollface, who drives a big red dark side, who wishes to escape the mask that she wears constantly. And my favorite, Mr. Grimm, 
who drives a vehicle named Mr. Grimm, <laughs> <laughs> who wishes to get revenge on the one man who turned him into a monster. He's a motorcycle, right? Yeah, he's on a motorcycle, and he has a skull as a face. He has the least defense because he's on a motorcycle. Yeah, uh, Mr. Grimm, uh, he, he's basically the Grim Reaper who throws scythes that are extremely powerful. He's extremely fast, but he has no defense, like Brad said. Yeah, Twisted Metal 3, I played that a lot, and he's the same in that game. I always like to play Dark Side. Yeah, you always heard Side. each character had a special move, and you know when Dark Side <laughs> triggers her because it has a honk, oh, man. <laughs> and then she would just smash into you. <laughs> but the only bad thing is, <laughs> you could drive right off the ledge and kill yourself. I never did that though. <laughs> Actually, just kidding. I did it all the time. <laughs> Number two on my list is gonna have to be Golden Eye. So satisfying to blow someone up in this game. I love killing someone with explosives, mines, rocket launchers, grenades, and uh, the facility level was always the best. I love that game. Uh, so many hours spent just me, Brandon, and our brother Matt playing it. Uh, you know, you always ch chase after the RCP 90 and uh, the bulletproof fest and all that stuff. So uh, that was my favorite game to play. What I really liked about the story mode was how you could play on 007 agent and yeah it was hecka hard you had to take your time we'd like spend two hours inching through the level yeah that was hecka tight and i think we made it all the way up to the cave and we couldn't get past that yeah. for some reason it's when there was a supercomputer and everyone kept rushing in to protect natalia oh she so kept sorry. killing except dying <laughs> it's so stupid isn't that how you get uh, uh on cheats or you get unlock stuff by doing it certain by doing it on certain difficulties and in beating it in certain times right oh, yeah that's so hard I remember the archives, we always wanted to get the cheat to turn invisible, and you had to beat it on double O agent in heck of like two minutes or something. We could never figure out the path to yeah. take. But that game was really fun. Even though it did spark the whole first person shooter boom. But that game is what um, gave me my love for sniper rifles. I, re I love using sniper rifles in games like that. My number two is also GoldenEye. Um, not much more that I could really say. Um, I like that you could uh, look at other people's screens when you're playing <laughs> multiplayer. I mean, I, I didn't really consider it cheating because the other players could do it to me just as well as I could do it to them. What is cheating, though, is selecting odd job. <laughs> it's heck of hard to shoot that guy. I'll give you one guess who does who was odd job all the time. Brian. Brian <laughs> <laughs> cool I think Goldeneye might have been the first game that I played regularly with four players. Yeah. I don't remember anything coming before. I mean, I know that they existed like that volleyball game on NES and maybe a couple of others. Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't play that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Goldeneye was pretty much the innovator with that, not only the first person shooter, but also a four player uh, uh, simultaneous. Star player. Fox too. Well, I think pretty much all the 64 game or multiplayer games we had it available, but that was the one that really yeah. set it off. I mean, right. That's what that's what I mean. You know what this, stu this stupid right. asshole said? Uh, the guy who I bought Luigi's Mansion from? He said, yeah, I really like Castlevania for 64. It was the first 3D game. I said, well, what about Mario 64 that came with the Nintendo? <laughs> oh, I didn't know about that. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> that's funny. I did want to jump in on GoldenEye. I thought it was really cool that if you shot an enemy in the hand, they would, like, shake their hand like, oh. <laughs> And that. then you shoot him in the crotch, and they're like, "Oh, yeah. you play Dude, you don't and shoot that. a guy in the dick." Yeah. <laughs> and then you shoot it like in their helmet. Their helmet will fly off. That was the first game that I played that actually did yeah. that. <laughs> that. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, so my number one game is uh, James Bond 007 Goldeneye. Um, I think that that one just for me. When I was thinking of this list, I was trying to think of games that not only were fun to play, but were just fun to play like with your friends. And, and I mean, I can't think of any other game that I'd play so many hours at night. Um, I think when it first came out, I had a, a birthday party, and uh, it was like me and five of my buddies, and we played that game. It was freaking all night. Um, you know, four players, so like the one guy would lose, and another guy would hop in, and um, yeah, it was just so much fun. And, and b before we even started playing multiplayer on that. Um, I was going to stay at my grandparents' house, and I was super pumped because that game just came out. I was like, oh, I'm going to play this the whole time at my grandma's. I'm going to stay tonight or stay up late and play. And I was playing the one player, 
And the one player on the story mode on that game was so much fun. And then, yeah. you know, then all of a sudden you started playing the buddies like, whoa, and it just changed the game. And, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it definitely was to me the first, first person shooter game, you know, that, that, uh, that started all that, that stuff. And I'm, it sucks that kids now probably don't even know that game. But, um, for me, that, that was, that was my favorite multiplayer game. They did release it on the Wii and it's just not, the it's same. not, I have it. Yeah, yeah. It's just not the same. And, and it's hard. It's kind of hard going back to a split screen multiplayer game when you play, you know, your own screen and stuff like that. And plus the the Wii graphics aren't as good as like the game systems now. So I think maybe if they made one for like the Wii U or even like regular games and it, but I, I don't think you can get the same effect that you had when we first got that James Bond game. It would be cool if you could do it on the Wii U when one person uses the thing and the other person uses the screen. Oh uh, yeah. That, that would, would be work. cool. Yeah, that would be cool. So but yeah, and, if, and that, this funny thing with that one too is you always blame somebody for looking at your screen or looking at your thing, but you know you're doing it also. Yeah. Like you're looking at where they place the proximity mines or whatever. You see they're in the bathroom and, you know, you'll yell at somebody, but you're doing the same thing the whole time. So yeah, that was my number one. My number one was Street Fighter, whether it be Street Fighter 2, Alpha 3, <coughs> EX2 plus Alpha, Third Strike. EX3, Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 2 Champion. Championship Edition Turbo Plus Alpha 2X. They're all great. There's even one for Dreamcast called like Street Fighter um, Zero 03. That's hecka rare. Zero 03? I never heard yeah. of that. Neither did I until I saw it on price charting. Uh, but Third Strike is really fun. That's for the Dreamcast. But there's just... Like, we started off with Street Fighter 2 for Super Nintendo. Brad and Matt would play that with, with us, and Matt would call us out for cheating because we knew the special moves. And he would try to use Dolph, Dolph and would just kick across the screen. <laughs> uh, and then, But uh, even when we used just one button, he'd say we were cheating just because we were so good. Yeah. And then there was EX2 plus Alpha. We played with Aaron at your house on Enfield. It me, me, you, Nick, and Aaron. And he'd always pick Saget, who was hecka stupid in that game. He was hecka <laughs> slow. And then Alpha, pirate. yeah, the pirate. And then Alpha Three. <laughs> Alpha Three really opened it up with a ton of characters. Saget was actually pretty good in that game. Uh, Blanca was okay. Akuma was okay. Ryu was hecka good. But yeah, that was my number one Street Fighter. My number one is Super Smash Brothers Brawl. I went back and forth between Melee and Brawl. Melee, even though Samus is hecka stronger in Melee and I like playing Melee in Brawl, there's so much more you could do with multiplayers. You could go through the adventure mode with people. The adventure mode on Brawl is so fun. Uh, all the players get captured and you have to go save them all. Uh, this is the first appearance of assist trophies, super moves, uh, and of course, Pitt made his debut on this game, uh, but that's my number one is Brawl. I remember so, getting that game when it first came out. I don't think I had a Wii at the time, did I? No, you came over to my house. Yeah, because I, I was like, I'll eventually get a Wii, but let's play this game now. Yeah. I went to Best Buy, and uh, people were standing in line for it, and I just walked over to the pre-order de desk, and I said, can I just take this copy? They said, sure, and I just walked right out. I paid for it, of course, but I was like the eighth one in but the first one out they've got all the different music on there too they've yeah. got all the kid Icarus songs they got zelda songs every game franchise they have songs to go with it and so. there, there's remixes yeah the fever mm -hmm. with dr mario <laughs> tech that, that's got to be my number one by far my number one is the guitar hero where the other instruments were introduced <laughs> guitar hero world tour uh released in 2008 for <laughs> multiple consoles mostly played it on the wii I, um, I'm a big fan of the Guitar Hero franchise. Uh, Rock Band expanded the concept to include drums and vocals, but in my opinion, Guitar Hero perfected it. Fuck yeah. Uh, World Tour was the first game in the franchise to include drum and vocal tracks. Each member of your band could play a difficulty that was appropriate for their particular skills. That would make it possible to play through entire songs without, without having to fear that a drummer with poor rhythm might fuck you. Some of my favorite songs include Eye of the Tiger by Survivor, Beat It by Michael Jackson, Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne, Hot for Teacher by Van Halen, Satch Boogie by Joe Satriani, and my favorite Pull Me Under by Dream Theater, one of my all-time favorite bands. So that's my number one. Honorable mentions? 
Uh, yeah, I got a few. I've got one, uh, House of the Dead for the Dreamcast, because we played that at my bachelor party. I have one that has not been mentioned, that's Wii Sports. That's a good one, yeah. yeah so. I, had the, uh, <laughs> I had a few, I'll just tell you a couple of them. The WCW vs. NWO yep. for the 64, uh, that game was so much fun, um, playing that. Um, Super Smash Brothers, you guys mentioned. Uh, and then another one. Kind of different, kind of co-op, uh, Gauntlet Legends. I used to play mm-hmm. that with my little brother oh, all the yeah. time. That's that that was a lot of fun, too, yeah. So, The female characters in that game are really good for two big obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the NWO, WCW, because when you hit them with the chair enough times, their face turns bloody, they get color. Yeah. <laughs> That's tight. Anybody have a jerk of the week? I do. Who's I that? just got one two hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with your neighbor across the street? Oh man! What? Just the gar- the garbage can? He's head? such a he's so booty tickled. <laughs> like I guess he, <laughs> I guess he walked out and saw Jordan playing and was like, like pointed at my car and was like, "What's up?" And then Jordan was like, "What? What?" And then Jordan came in and told me this is after what you told me what he did. So I guess he's upset that I parked in front of his house and took his quote unquote spot. When he doesn't own the street. He doesn't own the street. I hate that, man. Hate <laughs> so Jordan said, what What the guy did, I, so I parked my car in front of his house. He moved his recycling bin right in front of my car on the driver's side door. So I told Jordan, I guess he, someone wants to have their garbage can thrown across the street. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> he goes, Jordan said, "Well, he he just got out of the, a four year tour in the Marines. Don't give a fuck. No, he probably got PTSD. Yeah. So, depending on how I feel tonight, his garbage can might get thrown as I drive away." What did you call PTSD last week? Like PEDs? P- no, he <laughs> called PEDs PTSD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I have one. Do you have one, Nick? I have a very simple one. It's leaves. Leaves. <laughs> Le- leaves falling from trees, taking up my whole entire weekend, raking them up. Did you? Oh, fuck those things. Dude, my, my neighbor across the street, I was watching him uh, blow his leaves in pile and made it all nice and neat. The very next morning, his yard was full of leaves. Again. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, dude, if I keep doing this every day, maybe I'll get caught up. Like, <laughs> freaking suck. Uh, I have a small jerk of the week. Uh, the other day, Nick and I were leaving a Kings game and, uh, this car pulled up in the parking <laughs> lot, <laughs> and uh, I, we're just walking, not, just minor on business, not even talking. We're just walking, walk by this guy who, uh, like, all dressed like a like hip hop dude or whatever. He's all, "Who do you like?" It was after the game, and we're like, "I'm like, what? What are you talking about?" And, like, I didn't know if he was asking me what team I liked or whatever. Um, I was wearing a black sweatshirt with red and white writing, so maybe I thought he thought I was a Bulls fan or something. But I had a Kings hat on, mm-hmm. and. I was like, what are you talking about? Before I could say anything else, he's like, you're a weak-ass Kings fan. And I, just got in the car and I was like, what? And, and I just said to Nick, like, like, like five minutes later, we walked, didn't say anything, and I was like, man, some people are stupid. <laughs> and what I don't get is, like, was that guy, like, trying to fight somebody, or does he just say that? Like, yeah. I, I don't understand how people, like, people just, like, say random stuff he, like that to people they don't even know. He probably felt stupid because he thought you had a bull shirt on, but then saw your Summer King's hat. King's hat. And That's then, what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm, Nick and I have season tickets around our neck, and I'm like, all right, dude, like, that's cool. And it's just, I don't know, just people like that just <laughs> piss me off because, like, you mind your own business, and then you feel like I need to be a dick for no reason. What an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I have another jerk of the week. Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, I was getting the kids Taco Bell last night because they were hungry for some reason. They like to eat dinner or something. So I was in the drive through It was pretty late, like around 8 or 9. And the car behind me had their fucking <laughs> music. <laughs> oh, no. going to have to believe that. <laughs> It's okay because Brandon's married to an African American woman, but dude, that music was blasting so loud when I was giving my order, and then like he turned it down like when I was talking. But I pulled around and had to wait for like three cars, and as soon as he got behind me again, he started blasting that music again, <laughs> vibrating the whole car. I'm like, what's the fucking point of doing that? I don't get it. It doesn't sound good. Mm-hmm. It makes you look fucking retarded. <laughs> I don't get it. 
He's a retarded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably fat too. <laughs> probably sucking dick. You're supposed to suck dick in the passenger seat, not when you're driving. Sucking nigger dick. Oh man. No, you know what? No, what it is. It's the same thing with the guy that Matt had a confrontation with. I think it's just people who just want attention. Uh, yeah. They just that the only yeah. way they know how to get attention is to create conflict. Yeah, they did. They were playing music and they were like, "Oh, what's up?" Like they just saw their buddies, and I don't know if he's trying to show off or something, but probably intoxicated too. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> For people who live in the Antelope, Sacramento area, okay, so this is Brad. I'm doing a restaurant review. <laughs> For all those who live in the Antelope, Greater Sacramento area, off of Walerga in Alberta, is this place called Tugboats. Mm. It, it, I've been there before and it sucked, <laughs> but I decided to, I didn't want to go to Long John Silver's. I wanted to go get some more hoity toity fish and chips. So I went to Tugboats. I was blown away. It's a new owner. His wife makes everything fresh from scratch, even the fish, the chicken. Uh, lumpia is hecka good. She makes it right there in the kitchen. They fry... Are they Filipino? No, I don't know what they are. Uh. Uh, they fry everything in canola oil, so when you eat it, your face doesn't feel greasy at all. If, I mean, a little bit, but you know if you eat lunch on silvers, your whole, you need to take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> but if you get the daily special, it comes with a big-ass piece of fish, like 12 inches long. That's been battered and fried, French fries, onion rings, fried zucchini, uh, three shrimp that is panko breaded and then fried. So that's fucking hella good. And they have homemade cocktail sauce. Ooh, nice. Um, the cocktail sauce could use a little bit more of a kick, but I know everybody's, some people are pussies, pussies who can't handle yeah, their cocktail. Yeah, fucking bitches. But <laughs> they have booths in there now. They have uh, a condiment bar, so they have their, their vinegar. Tartar sauce? The tartar sauce. Yeah. The, I'm a cocktail sauce. So they have homemade tartar sauce in the pump bottle. That's tight. Uh, ketchup, anything you want. And I, I've been back there twice already. That place is fucking awesome. Yeah, Brad was like, I was like, do you have any recommendations today? Because I got done from Denio's and I was hungry. He's like, what could you eat? He's like, I'm eating fucking anything right now. He's like, go to this fish and chips place. They're closed on Sundays. Oh, man. Yeah. So guess where I had to go? <laughs> Long John Silver. Because you had the craving for fish and chips? Yeah, I did. Nice. But uh, hit him up. Tell him uh, you heard it on the podcast. I told him. I was like, dude, I'm going to give you guys an awesome review because your shit's so fucking good. This is how good it was. I sat down and ate my food and went back up and ordered more food. <laughs> That's That's tight. New England clam chowder is homemade. Uh, the lumpia, fried mushrooms, hush puppies. Oh, man. Were they busy? Like, do they have a lot of foot traffic? Yeah. Okay. That's good. So check it out, guys. But Tim, you should take Holly there if she likes fish. It's good. Gay box, Tim. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure the audience knows which Tim we're talking about. Since we're talking about restaurants, I just want to say, uh, g give a little memorial for El Porto. Uh, yeah. My favorite taqueria since I was like in high school. El Porto, North Highlands. Super burrito with steak. Never went wrong. I've eaten hundreds of those over the last decade or so. It sucks. I've only eaten three of them. I've only been there three times. So I guess they have a new location in Roseville it's called like Taqueria Los Altos. And it's funny because Xbox Tim took me there after we went disc golfing one time. And I, this was prior to my knowing that it was a El Portel franchise. Or I don't know if franchise is the correct word, but they're connected. Like they have the same ownership. And I was like, yeah, it's just, it's, it's good, but it's just not the same. And I don't know if I'll ever get that super burrito with steak again, but... Next time I'm uh, in the Roseville area and I have a craving for a burrito, I'll give them another try. Cool. got stone cold up in here <laughs> these are your week 12 stone cold locks so this is nick i'm doing stone cold uh, i decided to do this because brandon decided to stop doing his cool picks so um 
What I'm hoping is that maybe you guys can make some money off of my Stone Cold Locks. That's basically a football game that I'm picking every week, so uh, you can play some money at, with the casinos or, or some or with some friends. However, unfortunately, we usually wait a week to put these podcasts out. So by the time that uh, you hear this, the games will be over. So we're, I'm just going to do this for fun. Well, they go up on Saturday. Oh. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, there's not really any chance that it would ever yeah. work out. I mean, unless we recorded like Tuesday or Wednesday and we put it out Saturday, maybe. But or if you did next week's games this week. I couldn't though because the lines aren't out. Oh, uh, you knew the lines. I, I thought about that and I was like, I was all psyched to do it and I was like, wait, they don't have lines for the for you next can, week's games. Can make up lines. <laughs> <laughs> like Bill Simmons with cousin Sal. Yeah. Where they guessed the lines. Yeah. But then I, yeah. Anyway, you can you see the the difficulty that I had there. Mm-hmm. A lot of these games might already be over. In fact, I think all of them are. So that could be funny as well if my locks are already proven losers. So my number one lock, Chiefs of Kansas City, (laughs) minus seven at Oakland. (laughs) (laughs) Have you guys ever had the Casey Masterpiece barbecue chips made by Lay's? Yes. Yes. They are delicious. They are. I like the thin chips. That's gay. What are you talking about? The thin, they're thin, flimsy, right? I guess. What are you talking I about? I've never heard them called thin, thin chips. Uh, though. The, chips, fucking potato chips. But what else flimsy. would you call them? They're not flimsy. <laughs> no, like thin. they flop around. They're thin, like they're thin and crispy, <laughs> like normal lace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamila likes the 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 ridges ones. ones. Yeah, I, I don't like those. Ridges, yeah. So my point was, you know that. Casey Masterpoint piece, they're obviously referring to Kansas City. Yeah. And I can only imagine how tasty the Kansas City barbecue really is. Oh, man. I actually have some family that lives in Kansas, which uh, made the San Francisco Giants victory over the Royals that much more sweet. <laughs> but I do have an excuse to make it to Kansas someday, and you, you can believe that I'll be grubbing on heck of barbecue when I get there. What do they eat in Oakland? Um, I think most of the people there just forage for food out of the dumpster. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh my! <laughs> All right, really though, the, the Raiders suck, and they have not picked up a win yet. The Chiefs are coming off a huge win over the defending champion Seattle Seahawks. I don't care that this game is in Oakland, or that it's on a Thursday night, or that the Chiefs have to win by seven points. The Raiders are not winning this game, and it's a good bet that they will lose by more than a touchdown. My second lock, 49ers minus nine versus the Native Americans. Oh, okay. What's you, that? Native Americans. Don't Red, be racist. Redskins? Maybe? Oh, okay, 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 okay. You're yeah. a horrible person. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> you can call this a homer pick, but I see the 49ers annihilating the Washington Native Americans. I'm not a bigot like Dan Snyder, the owner of the Washington football team. Snyder's poor taste will result in some negative karma for his team, and Washington will be crushed. <laughs> Just like how Rusev crushed Sheamus to win the U.S. title. That's fucking right. For real, though, so the, the 49ers are really good, and if they win the Super Bowl, I win $270. So I need them to keep winning to make the playoffs. Nine points is two scores, but man, the Washington football team just really sucks. The 49ers are at home, and they're due for a big offensive game because they played kind of shitty last week in New York. So I, I expect them to, to blow the, the Washington Native Americans out. Hmm. Uh, my third and final stone cold lock is the Cincinnati Bengal Cats <laughs> versus the Houston Texans. The Texans. How much beer can you get? Totally. I, I mean, I know Stone Cold's from Texas, and Chuck Norris likes to pretend that he's a Texas Ranger, but Texas more or less sucks dick. They tried to secede. We should have just <laughs> let them. You should have just let them secede. Fuck them. Be, did, did they want to become part of Mexico? I think they just wanted to become their own nation. Oh, okay. This wasn't recently. Like Canada. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that their douchebag governor, Rick Perry, another racist, by the way, remember the name of the camp where his family hunts? You remember this? No. When he was like involved in the presidential race a couple years ago. Camp David? No. no. It's worse. It's racist. Oh, man. It's called Niggerhead. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. You can't bleep that out. <laughs> he, he hunts at a camp called Niggerhead. That's a shoot. I never heard of that. <laughs> Rick Perry actually bestowed to Chuck Norris the title of Honorary Texas Ranger. Oh, What a fucking stupid state. And and all this Chuck Norris talk, I mean, it's all about Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say too much about Chuck Norris. No, no offense to Chuck Norris. His books are funny. <laughs> Chuck Norris? <laughs> 
He has books. The facts about Chuck Norris. Oh, he doesn't make those himself. <laughs> <laughs> he uses a pen name. <laughs> the Bengal Tigers are going to go to Houston and rip off some heads. Just like that tiger did to Roy of Siegfried. And, <laughs> and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Tiger tight. So what were the actual scores? I know uh, I was looking them up. Update. <laughs> um, for those of you know, the uh, Oakland game was played on Thursday. I knew and, that one, obviously. Yeah, and they got their first win. Um, uh, Niners did win against the Redskins, thirteen to, or seventeen to thirteen. Ah, they didn't cover. Didn't cover. Uh, and then Cincinnati won twenty-two to thirteen. So I believe they I covered. Went one for three. Then yeah. that's not that's not making money for <laughs> no, you guys. No. Let's try harder next week. Guess what time it is? What time is it? It's time for Brandon's eight bit <laughs> corner. So I have a new game for you guys. So based on the top five we did. I'm giving you guys confessions of characters that might have been mentioned in some of the games of our top five. So I'm going to give you what they would have they would confess to, and you have to would have to guess the character. <laughs> Number one, I love to ruin relationships by seducing women already spoken for. All my gizmos and gadgets can save me from any situation. Well, maybe not from a smart villain. I have no idea. Batman, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. James Bond. Oh. oh, that's a good one. Nobody likes me. I'm only picked in games by male players to get a few laughs from his buddies or by girls because I'm cute. Face it, I have the lowest tolerance for smash attacks and only have one real move, which I use to sing myself to oblivion. Damn it. <laughs> Jigglypuff. <laughs> I was going to say Kirby, but oh, I think Julie is the answer. Number three. I tried to enter the arena and gain popularity by being the new bitch in town, but even then, I was never that popular. My moves were sexier, and so was my body. I wore less clothes than the other girl and had a cute hat to go along with it. I never made it past being a third-rate character. I can't think of that one. Uh-uh. <clears throat> Cammy. From Street Fighter. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Number four. I only know that I have an insatiable love for the color purple and that my Japanese name is an anagram for Ijiwaru, which means ill tempered. Waluigi? Waluigi. Number five. Or no one can tell if I am man or woman unless I speak. Then you will see I'm all man. Most people have never played this fighting game that I'm in, but they have been able to use me in more popular games. I could shape shift and have, and I have hair as white as snow. At first, I thought it was Bridget. That's what I thought. <laughs> it's Alucard. He oh, was okay. in Castlevania Judgment, the fighting game. Number six. I have that game. Yeah, I know. Number six. Brr, 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 brr. <laughs> Mutant <laughs> <laughs> football league, <laughs> or whatever the fuck it's called. You want to repeat it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Blanca. <laughs> Last one. Number seven. I'm the lamest hero in any u universe you could imagine. That is why I had to bribe the company that made this game into letting me not only be a playable character, but make me good and cheap. My portrayal in this game is the apex of my life, and everything else is meaningless. I love fish. <laughs> Master Chief. No. Aquaman. Uh. From DC Injustice. <laughs> That's all I had. Do you want to tell them about what's in the box? Oh, yeah. So, I don't know if you heard this, Matt, but we, I tried to play a game last week uh, called What's in the Box. Yeah. And it kind of ended with it being pretty much cut out. It was too much controversy. Yeah, it uh, was. Oh, was that on the last week? Yeah, on this one that just released today. That wasn't the one where you named off, uh, what's it called, the uh, covers, and then you had to guess it? Yeah, I had another game before that we did What's in the Box. Um, it was only a few seconds, maybe the... Uh, some, okay. Yeah, because it starts out with, okay, what's in the box? 
Okay, that's it for what's in the box. <laughs> oh, that's why. See, I was driving. I probably just probably just bled into the other one. Okay. So we uh, cut it out for obvious. Well, not we cut it out because it was too controversial. If you email us at treasurehuntingfornostalgia at gmail dot com, but if you guys really want to know, just send us an email. Okay, guys, one more bit of business. We got uh, a pretty good email. I mean, we get emails all the time. We're just uh, picking this one out at random because it's got a lot of good questions on it. Dexter Pilsnack says, Hey guys, love the pod. I do love the effort of bleeping your new episodes with derogatory terms to homosexual, but I just wanted you to know that I'm a gay female and do not find it offensive when you refer to things as being gay or saying fag or faggy. I would hope that other listeners are smart to know that saying something as gay or faggy is not demeaning to the LGBT community. Hmm. Would you mind answering a few questions? You can do this on or off the air. How old are you guys? How old are we? 30. Well, the three of us are 32. Yes. we will be 33 on the 31st. Yeah. Okay. New Year's Eve. Yeah. What are you, 28? No, 31. Oh, 31. Close. <laughs> hey, I wish I was 28. Okay. Next question. What is your favorite Pokemon? I know Nick doesn't like it, but I really enjoy it. My favorite is Vespa Queen. Is is a is a Pokemon that it has to be a female in order to evolve. It's a bee that has to be a female, then she'll evolve into a queen bee. That's how I got it. Yeah, uh, I like my number one's always been Pidgeotto. Even though he sucks in the game, Pidgeotto is my favorite. He's got the attitude, and he tells Ash to fuck off all the time. Uh, Starmie. <laughs> I like Jigglypuff. I like, I like Squirtle because he got Squirtle. So <laughs> Next question. I also went through some of the older episodes and have a few questions. Whatever happened to the Pokemon battle that was challenged Ooh. to Brad? Dang, she's hecka on this shit. <laughs> um, we tried doing it on the pod, but it was like so uneventful. We yeah. just cut it out. Yeah, Nick, he didn't want to commentate and be like, Ooh, Brandon just used Charizard to use Flamethrower, yeah. even though I'd never used Charizard. But... Um, yeah, it just it was it was kind of sucky. It didn't make for good pod. Next question: Have you guys been on any new hunts? I found this quite amusing and wish I could have seen Brandon's interaction with Sea Bear. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we, we haven't been on any new hunts, but we would like to go on some hunts. Yeah, yeah. heck of tight. Your in laws still own that property over there, don't they? Yeah. Oh man, they go out of town a lot, huh? But, oh, but someone lives in that other house now, huh? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question. Does Brad still have the tooth that he flung at Brandon and Nick? <laughs> <laughs> I did get my tooth pulled, and I still have it somewhere. Have you guys been to the Goodwill Outlet since episode six? <laughs> it sounds amazing, and I wish I lived by one. No, nope, haven't been we, there. Don't lie. We've been to the one in South Oh, Sack. that one sucks. It was so dirty. There was, like, uh, dirty clothes everywhere. Dirty people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Don't go to that one. The one off Madison, I guess, is better. Yeah, that one's way better. Next question. Heaven and Hell was my favorite game show. That's right. Do you have any plans to do another one similar in the future? Uh, not really. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> that was an editing nightmare for sure. That was so hard to edit. It took me like a day to edit each episode. It was just bad. We had bad mics, so. though. It doesn't matter if, if, like, a conversation started and I edit that out because it's sidebar and then it comes up later in the <laughs> podcast, I have to remember what I edited uh, out, so I have to keep going back and forth. Otherwise, it won't make sense. Next question. What are your plans for episode 100? I plan to do a video recording and invite all of our friends to a similar location like our house, whoever has the biggest house, probably mine, and do a live podcast with handing out awards. That okay. Would be heck awesome. We have buy like little trophies from the Goodwill. We have about 20 some odd episodes, 27 episodes to think about it. Yep. That's what I plan to do. Not sure if it will happen. Uh, thank you for taking the time to review my email and happy hunting. It's cool. Thank you for your email, Dexter. That was really cool. Thank you, Dexter. Yep. All right, that'll do it for episode 73 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Maddie. Happy hunting. Ooh.